What is going on everybody? I hope you guys are having a great day. I've been really enjoying playing Slime Rancher 2 and I want to make videos for it, but I've tried to make playthroughs and I usually don't end up finishing things. So instead of doing playthroughs, I just thought I would make something that might help people out. Maybe like a quick guide. And while these are not going to be short, uh, they're going to be as short as possible, giving you the information that you need. So with that said, I thought we'd start off talking about the corrals and how they work. Let's go ahead and jump right into this and just give you the information that you need. So when you're starting a corral, you should first start getting a few slimes in there. For the purposes of this video, we're going to assume that you know the very basics of how the game works. But still, for brand new players, I'd like to go over some of the fundamentals of the game, starting with corrals and how each part can help. Now, if you want to start making some money quickly, you're going to want to get some Largo slimes in there. And Largo slimes are created by combining two slimes of different species. Now, once you have them in there, the basic fence that you start your corral with won't do much help to keep them in. So let's go ahead and talk about all the parts that are available for the corral. First off, you've got high walls. Now, you're definitely going to want to get high walls to start. High walls will help keep your Largo slimes inside when they get a little jumpy. And high walls will cost you 260 coins. After that, we've got air nets. You'll definitely want to buy air nets. Air nets further help keep the slimes where they belong. If they're left unfed for too long, slimes can get agitated and will team up to jump out of their high walls. So the air nets help stop this. Air nets will set you back 425 coins. After that, personally, I think the best thing is plort collectors. So since you've successfully imprisoned your slimes, you'll definitely want to be able to get their ports with ease. Plort collectors allow you to collect all of their droppings at the press of a button, and the plort collector will set you back 500 coins. After that, we've got auto feeders, and you'll want to get yourself an auto feeder. These are automated machines that allow you to keep food reserves on tap and will automatically feed your slimes at intervals that you choose. Now you can choose from feeding them slowly, feeding them at a medium rate, or feeding them quickly and auto feeders will set you back another 500 coins. After that, we've also got a music box. Now, if you want to be a good rancher, buying your slimes a music box is definitely the way to go. Sometimes you need to go on longer journeys than you thought, and that means your slimes might run out of food even if you had the auto feeder stocked up. And that's when the music box comes in handy. The music boxes will help calm your slimes even when they're angry, and a music box will set you back 350 coins. And the last option that we've got for corrals are solar shields. Now these upgrades are optional. You don't have to buy them for every single corral that you make, but you definitely will need them if you want to tame nocturnal slimes. So there are a few slimes that can only exist in the dark of night. And if you don't have a solar shield set up, there's a good chance that once the sunrise comes, your nighttime slimes will die. So you kind of need a solar shield in specific situations and solar shields will set you back another 425 coins. And that just about covers all the upgrades that you can get for corrals and how they work. Now, go get yourself set up. And if you guys need some more quick tips on Slime Rancher 2, be sure to check out my next post right here.